Simon. And I'm Pyrus. And tonight, we're we saw ta- the amazing Spider-Man. We're talking about Spider-Man and Steam and Space Ninjas. And dragons. And dragons. Lots of dragons. Dragons that you kill by screaming at them. Uh, since our last <clears throat> review of Skyrim got lost in the void during our server move... Whoops. Uh... Well, We're talking actually, about it tonight. the problem with that was just that it never really got recorded properly in the first place. I have fragments of it, but there's <coughs> chunks of audio missing. Oops. See, the way I worded it, it didn't sound like it was our fault. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it made it sound like it was my fault. <laughs> Canadian robots did it. But, since Skyrim is cheap on the Steam sale, Sen has been playing it, so this is a good opportunity to talk to talk about it again. Especially also, since there's probably were... lots of people who will be playing it on the Steam sale. Yep. If you were even remotely interested in PC gaming, why are you not on the Steam summer sale? Because dang. Right? My poor wallet. Well, my damages stand at $82.33 so far. And... So we can still burn 20 bucks of that, right? Yep, totally. <laughs> there's five more days of sales. It just keeps going. Yeah, I personally... Um, have splurged on Left 4 Dead 2 at $5 and Arkham City for $10.19. I have so far only picked up Skyrim and I'm really looking hard at Rage right now. <clears throat> I, I think Rage might be interesting, mostly just because of the mega textures I keep hearing about. And right. I need to show off this computer which is just a spectacular excuse for spending lots of money because it's like, well, my old computer died and there was no sense getting a mediocre new computer. So may as well get a really expensive new computer. <clears throat> and now that we're so far down the rabbit hole that we have this really expensive new computer, let's spend more money to make it worthwhile. Absolutely. And I did the same thing in that I was like, well, I need a new rig. Or actually, no, it wasn't that I needed one. It was that, you know, I'm going to get myself something nice for making Dean's List and decided to get a new computer. I was like, this is my first desktop and it's awesome. Let's buy a bunch of games for it. <laughs> In my case, I don't need to justify my purchases. Frankly, I've just still got my really nice computer that I built to play Crisis five years ago that still runs everything fantastically. And, uh, yeah, I was just like, eh, I want something new to play. Oh, wait, this is on sale for 60% off? I'll buy it. Yeah, <laughs> so, goodbye. goodbye, free time. Apparently, tips are a fairly lucrative way to make a living. Fairly, absolutely, if you know what you're doing. Sen is often on the prowl to spend these oodles of cash <clears throat> he comes home buried in. The most expensive thing I have bought so far has been the Call of Duty Modern Warfare pack, 1, 2, and 3, when 3 was in the daily deal, for $50. And... <laughs> There was an exchange I had with a friend of mine the uh, like a week or two ago where they had not played any Mass Effect yet, and I was like, how have you not played Mass Effect? Mass Effect is like the biggest game in the world, and this is like a, a gamer, somebody who plays lots of games. And then he was like, well, I've played all of the Call of Duty Modern Warfare games, and you haven't, and I've been like, well, you're kind of right. <laughs> that's, that's Touché, sir. Touché. I, I, I guess I'm taken there, so I'll try and rectify that tragedy. Right. At, th- at that point, you've just you've got nothing. That- that's it. Because, I mean, even I played Cod Blops for nothing else so that we could review it. I've never played a single Call of Duty game of any form, ever. But the Modern Warfare games in particular have a story, in addition to just being shooters, that's worthwhile. Right. And Cod so... Blops had an excellent story. I don't know that one through three were terribly interesting. Uh, Terraria also on sale for five ninety nine, which is great if we could get it to work. Uh, Your Terraria copy is not functional. Um, it works single our, player, but we've yeah. been having networking issues. We haven't been able we to play much multiplayer. We've been trying to play multiplayer for like a month, dude. I see. Uh, also, Red Faction Guerrilla only thirteen dollars. I have Red Faction Arm. Is that the one on Mars with all the destructible terrain? Yes, that is the one immediately before Armageddon. Okay, I have Armageddon, not from Steam, but from Amazon game sales, which were running hard and fast just prior to the Steam sale. So much sales. 
But I mean, right now you can get Grand Theft Auto 4 for $5. Possibly the best of the Grand Theft Auto games thus far. If you really want to go all out, all out, you can get the Grand Theft Auto Complete Package, which includes the first, second, and third games, Vice City, San Andreas, 4, and the Episodes from Liberty City's pack. I have all but four, and I didn't realize when I bought that pack how much, or how old the older Grand Theft Auto games are. Yes. Because they're, like, really old. That's like PS2 era. Right. Would, would no, you I like to hear it's... something shocking? Grand Theft Auto 4, which still looks fantastic, by the way, is from 2008. Yep. Interestingly, the I giant bomb game of the year 2008 beating out. No, four was really good. I enjoyed Nico Bellic and his story. After after that, I kind of got into Saints Row more. Just for the sheer craziness. I don't know what it was. It was just like I was just like, oh, I guess I'll pick up this, and then I got kind of brand loyal to that instead. I don't know. The the thing I'm really loving is this uh, the sidebar, the community choice. Yeah. That. Every eight hours, the community gets to vote on what the next big sale will be. Uh, out of three options, let's not be ridiculous. Right, so th this is just fantastic, because right now it's Oblivion Game of the Year Edition, which if Skyrim's on sale, why is Oblivion? Uh, Torchlight. Also, Oblivion was kind of awful. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, I'm enjoying the heck out of Skyrim. I did not like Oblivion. I, I stopped playing Oblivion after, like, 20 minutes because I was like, this isn't fun. <laughs> The difficulty scaling in Oblivion is way, way too hard. It's as you level up in Oblivion, there's just suddenly, like, Daedra murdering you in the middle of town automatically everywhere. Whether you're yeah, actually genius. leveling combat skills or not. Yep. So you could just be leveling your blacksmithing, and then all of a sudden you're getting murdered by Daedra. Even if you are leveling combat skills the game, I guess they want it to stay consistently difficult, but that just means it doesn't ever get any easier, which makes it such that I don't even want to level up anymore because there's no reward for it. Yep, because then you will just get torn to shreds and not have a chance to do anything. I actually but Skyrim doesn't have that. Very early on in Oblivion for that reason. It was like I got to Oblivion and it was like, oh, this is way hard now. Yep. As a well-documented cheater, I was kind of flabbergasted by the fact that I was like, uh, I was coming back to Oblivion after having played it a little bit and then dropped off, and I was like, okay, I'm going to come back to this. I was like, I'll just cheat. I'll just make myself really powerful. And then I was like, okay, I am. I don't take damage, and this game is too hard. What is the deal? <laughs> My cheats aren't working. I, I can clip through walls, I have infinite money, I don't take damage, and this game is too difficult. So, that might be a sign of some balance problems. Maybe? <laughs> might be an so, issue. Tell me about your experiences with Skyrim so far, Sen. So, so far I've played up till your first dragon kill. I, I just grabbed... Spoiler, her. there's dragons in it. Yeah, I just grabbed Lydia. <laughs> she doesn't seem to like me as much as the elf that I initially grabbed. So you have companions? Is it like the old public in that sense? Explain this to me, because I've never played it. Okay, so from what I know so far about companions, um, they do a very uh, good job about following you around. They tend to have problems when you, what like... What you mean their pathfinding isn't broken? I don't well, know. Well, they tend to have problems when you follow weird paths. Like, for instance, when I'm I was... Like, I'm just going to climb the side of this mountain as I'm right. walking around. When I was just leaving the, the first castle where I picked up Lydia, I, I ran down the mountain... And then I was looking around, and I'm like, where's Lydia? But amazingly, she showed up, like, right in time for the first major combat situation that I ended up in after getting her. Um, I, I found it interesting that they can accidentally shoot you. I was like, what the hell? Why did you shoot me in the back? I didn't do anything. But, uh, no, they, they can and do. So you have to watch out for that. But overall, it's nice to have someone else with you to carry your stuff. Um, you, you can just hand them gear, and if they can equip it, they'll put it on. 
Um, Pixie was asking me earlier, as just a little sidebar, but if when you stole from shops or from anywhere, did the item still get magically flagged as stolen and all the yeah. merchants in the world instantly know that? Yeah. And that is related to followers because you can launder the stolen flag off of items by dropping them and telling your companions to pick them up and then having them give them back to you. Because if anybody other than you picks up an item, it's it the stolen flag is reset. And the way that it is handled in Oblivion and Skyrim is kind of much nicer than the way it was handled in Morrowind, which is that in Morrowind, if you stole an item, all items of that type were permanently flagged as stolen. And then instead of uh, vendors not buying them off of you, you could just try and sell an item to the vendor and then they would immediately attack you. Well, that doesn't so, work. <laughs> That got pretty messy if you played a long game of Morrowind, because then it's like just about every item in the world has the stolen flag on it. Right. I did like Veronica's first comment upon looking at Lydia. Well, she's clothed. That she is. I was just like, that That armor looks like it might actually protect you in a fight. So, like, yeah, overall, I, I can see where the game is incredibly uh, immersive and enjoyable. Like, I I really love that I can roam this world and treat it like a real place with actual, like, people living in it, actual incentives for exploring, finding new things. Not everything is just on the map. Like, it, it's really, really good. I'm enjoying the hell out of it. Um, I'm glad that I got the PC version, because I really, really like that I can download mods for it. Right now I'm actually browsing the Steam Workshop as I'm talking at this moment. I've got to say, I think that if you play an Elder Scrolls game on a console, then you are missing out on a large part of the experience and also contributing to the decay of the series. Because <laughs> uh, the games have been shaped a lot by being console friendly, and I don't think it has helped them very much. In particular, the low amount of RAM in consoles has resulted into cities being turned into isolated areas. So you can't just levitate. Well, that means there's no levitate spell at all anymore. And you used to be able to just levitate over city walls. Just be there. It's great. Yep, I remember that from Morrowind. But also, mods. Mods are amazing and contribute a lot of the value to Elder Scrolls games. Yeah, I'm, cur have... I'm currently looking for my ideal player house. And there's actually a series that I recommend to anyone else that might be uh, looking for this. Uh, on GameSpot.com, there's a series called Top 5 Skyrim Mods of the Week, where they will just pick five mods and go in and talk about them. And some of the things that they have suggested and shown off are just absolutely incredible in this game. Do you think that Skyrim looks very good? Because everybody else says it does. I think I might disagree with them. I feel it's kind of average overall. Like, I mean, that that's the best I can say. It, it looks good on my computer, without a doubt. I'm playing it on medium settings, and it looks good. It's passable. It's enjoyable. That said, meh. I, I could see more value to, to the style. It, it runs just fine on my computer. I can say that. It looks to me like it would look amazing to somebody from 2002 who didn't really know what facial animation could be. Hasn't, like, right. seen... The, the way the kids kind of stare at you is more than a little creepy. Like, specifically the children faces in this game. It's like, please, please stop looking at me. It's like the textures don't have depth maps on them. There's like cobblestones, right. except if there's the gaps between the cobblestones aren't lower than the cobblestones themselves. It's just a flat texture on top of this big surface. It's like, hmm. Yep. But, I mean, I guess it doesn't look bad. Yeah, like I said, I'm really enjoying the heck out of it. Um, it, it got me through a week of basically going, 
man, I really, really want to be playing uh, Sins of a Solar Empire, but it's not on sale. <laughs> yeah, that's a tragedy. Right, like, they would have sold me this game by now, except they're not willing to put it on sale for some reason. I feel the same way, except just about it not being out instead of not being on sale about SimCity. Because I'm like, I've got this list of, like, 250 AAA games sitting in front of me in Steam, and I'm like, I could sure go for some SimCity right now. Or, Except you know, the new even... one's coming out, so... Yeah, but that's not until February. I don't know. That's forever. And you know what's not forever? Friday. Which is when the Dark Knight comes out. It will be a thing. Uh, it's the coming. Dark Knight Rises. They're not yes, re-releasing the, Dark... the same movie! <laughs> hey, that's a... They're... Those titles are very similar. I have mixed them up accidentally a number of times. It seems well, ironic except, that it was... Except I feel like I feel like it's important to, important to clarify because it that could have been a thing, you realize. You're definitely right. With because, the way that yeah, people there's... remake and rehash and re-release things. Totally. Like the Dark Knight in 3D, like could have been a thing that you could have been talking about. And so uh, Heck, only two months ago I could have told you that the Lion King is coming out and you'd be like the Disney animated movie from, like, the 60s? And I'd be like, yep, it's coming out. <laughs> I, I, I yes. Yeah, I'm pretty sure The Lion King came out in, like, the, the 90s. 90s. <laughs> okay, well, my Disney animated movie chronology is not perfect. <laughs> if that was meant to be hyperbole, well, good on you, but... That is just a really bad guess. So... I am almost certainly going to go to see The Dark Knight Rises, unlike The Amazing Spider-Man, which I've managed to completely miss. Did I miss by missing? Am I losing out? Okay, so obviously, to talk about this, we're going to have to draw comparisons to the Sam Raimi films. Especially since um, it seems to be, like, I can, at them a bit. I can honestly say I was a big fan of the second Raimi film. The first one was okay. The second I one was the one. good. I loved the second one, and of course we all know what happened with the third one. Best not said. Um, the Amazing Spider-Man is, the best way to put it, is different. It is I a... I feel like it's not marketed to us anymore. No. It is a reboot They, they for, went let's dip in on that Twilight money. Yeah, they, they went, let's do a teenage romance that happens to have a superhero kick to it. Because superheroes are just as good as supernatural creatures, right? We, we can just do that. Um, without a doubt, the, the worst part of this movie is Peter Parker's hair. <laughs> like, by far, absolute worst thing. There were times when it's like, oh shit, did I walk into Twilight? Oh no, that's just Peter Parker. It, it's fine. Um, but that, that aside, it's a stupid aesthetic thing that didn't need to be there. Like, the, the Twilight hairstyle, even after he's pulling off his mask, just doesn't make sense. Is it a bad movie or worth as much bile as the internet seems to be spewing at it, the, the fanboys? Probably not. Like, this is not a terrible movie. Their performances are passable. I frankly liked the, the Uncle Ben hook in this one more than during the... Raimi uh, films, or during like the Ultimate Spider-Man uh, version, I think the version that they went with in this movie was frankly better. It had more emotional punch when Uncle Ben died that, oh, Peter Parker was partially involved in that one. It wasn't just his non-acting that, uh, that resulted in his death. It was his involvement led to this. <clears throat> So that that's a really great new version of the still, mythos. Uh, I, would, I would argue it's still an inaction. No, but he was actively participating in the crime this time. He actively uh, took okay. an item from that store and left with the perpetrator of the crime. He even thanked the guy. Mm -hmm. And then the guy went down but the street and shot Uncle Ben. Like you do. It's not like he helped him hold up the store. No, he didn't. But he still participated in shoplifting and thanked the guy for it. 
guy tossed a mill like uh, the the scenario spoilers is that the the scene is set up that he's short two cents on trying to buy this thing of milk and he got he gets into a little bit of an argument with the shopkeeper who's like you know this is my policy you're you know you got money put it back and the guy behind him turns out is like surprise I'm robbing the store and in the ensuing this is a hold up while the while he's getting the shopkeeper to dunk or whatever he tosses the milk at Peter Parker it's like here you can have this yep and then he goes down the road gets into a uh, tussle with Uncle Ben and then just shoots him like you do oh also Uncle Ben took on a more much more active rather than passive role I will I will point this out right that he was actively trying to be like hey gun and that but he's like trying to interfere with the guy getting away and that's how he got shot yep as opposed to just a carjacking like in the Sam Raimi films or um, just being like in the wrong place at the wrong time just sitting minding his own business or whatever Absolutely. He's, he's less of a out and out victim I would say in this scenario so I was disappointed to hear that the there's actually an origin story in this movie because from the trailers, yes. I, it kind of seemed like maybe they would just be like, okay, you know how Spider-Man works. We're going to no. tell a Spider-Man no. story, and maybe later we'll come back and give you an origin story oh, if, no. if once yes. we have a compelling. It's, there's a whole bunch of plot plot threads that are just dropped out of nowhere, and it's, yeah. it's kind of narratively a mess. Well, this is the first time that we get in a film form the concept of who Peter Parker's parents were. Um, they're, they're pulling plots from the Ultimate Spider-Man series and that while well, there was a conspiracy involving uh, Peter Parker's we father... We never revisit this thread, though. Right. Once, we're, we're just never given anything. Spider-Man, we never, like, touch on the thing with the parents again. Yeah, you think, you'd think that he would want um, to talk to the lizard the, a bit the, about, the, hey, can you tell me about my dad? That guy who was, like, being a big coercive force in the forming of the lizard as a um, main antagonist, that thread gets fucked. Yeah, he just disappears. A, he just books it out the no, moment. No, just, it's just dropped. We just never see him again. We don't right. know what happened to him. We don't know if the lizard got him. We don't know what happened. Right. I have a little inside baseball about that, and that is that there was a lot of footage related to that released in promotional material that was not in the movie, and it seems very much like what happened is that they were deciding right up front that they were going to make a trilogy, and so they pushed that plot point into episode two just to draw it out. And maybe as a consequence, there's not many real arcs in Spider-Man 1. And the cause... problem with that idea of planting things for future continuity is, I, I mean, it works out great when we get things like the Avengers or the Harry Potter series, but uh, you get things like, say, Green Lantern or this, where it's like, right. we don't know for sure that there's going to be a next one, and why does that excuse sloppy narrative in this one? That we can just hand wave it as, oh, that'll probably just come up in the sequel. Right, the trick about the Avengers is that Thor was a good movie without the Avengers, and that Captain America stood on its own, and that if the, this studio can pretty much guarantee that there's going to be a trilogy of these Spider-Man movies, just because they've got the money to bankroll it, and also they have a contractual requirement to make Spider-Man every year or else it reverts to Marvel, which would be a great thing, by the way. I mean, I think we can all agree that we'd be happier if Marvel was allowed to take control of Spider-Man. I saw it, actually, we... I saw it, uh, along that same thread, before you get too far off of that, I saw an interesting um, article that Movie Bob on The Escapist wrote, in which he suggested, like, other... Avengers universe uh, superheroes that they ought to tie in there, Spider-Woman being one of them. And he would love for them to have a line where it's just, where one character asks her, aren't you the... And she just cuts them off and goes, nope, never heard of the guy, never heard of the man. <laughs> 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 they just can't say that word. I wonder if that they could pull that off contractually. Because it's... Um, Columbia has a number of Marvel properties, including X-Men and the Fantastic Four. 
So they might have a fairly broad contract that would preclude something like Spider Girl. But Spider if they could Woman. just or Spider, right, Woman Spider is Woman. Different. Just saying. I'm gonna be pedantic about it. Sure, absolutely. If they could just do that, and then Columbia is just left holding their butts, it would be amazing. <laughs> Hang on to your butts. The butts. Hang on to them. So yeah, like, in, in no ways is this a bad film. Like, I can th I think of much worse films that I've sat through in theaters. Um, I don't understand the amount of hate this is getting. It's not fantastic, but by no means is it awful. I, I was not a fan of him, I'm not gonna lie. I, I, I feel like the company I was with helped improve the experience, but... Like, that weird bit with Gwen Stacy's dad, especially by played by Played by Dennis Leary, who you, you knew the scene before the epic uh, confrontation. It's just like, you are so dead. <laughs> like, I'm sorry, you've hit every note of... Parental figure gonna die. Honestly, if you're an adult male and you're being nice to Peter Parker, also, you're doomed. Also, there's <clears> a, <throat> just a smidge of misogyny, I feel like, in that scene where it, we just hand wave it as periods are gross and shaming people for them. I, I don't. No, I think that was more, hey, dads don't want to talk about that stuff and will do anything to avoid the situation, including because obviously. People public, like, a society is all like, this is gross. Right. In including, like, letting your daughter's awkward behavior just go. Just leave it. He he could not have run out of that so, scene that, that faster. Scene, that scene seemed really problematic to me. That's irresponsible as a parent, because, I mean, you gotta teach your daughter to shit. <laughs> so, may as well help her with her other, other bodily functions. I mean, if you're gonna be a parent, you've gotta teach these things. This is just... That's part of why I have no intention of being a parent, but once you've signed up for that, you got to do the whole deal. Pyro had enough trouble learning to poop as it was. He doesn't want to do it again. <laughs> True. Or teach someone else to do it. I'm not going back to that time. So I'm currently downloading a mod for Skyrim that is specifically drops the weight of all potions and poisons from half a pound to uh, 0.5 or 0.1 ounces. Like, it is literally, yeah, potion shouldn't weigh this much. We're lowering it. One of the great joys of Elder Scrolls games is going through the world and just stealing everything. Which, encumbrance and the uh, stolen flag are kind of a limitation on uh, that. It would be real nice if they were a bit more sophisticated with their stolen flag. And you could only not sell stolen things back to the original owner. Because, okay, there's a fictionalized reason for that, which is that they recognize it. Like, you know, this this helmet looks awfully familiar. They're like, hey, what the hell? That That's mine. Why, why are you but selling me my thing? When you steal from somebody in, like, the deep north, and then you go to the south, and then they're like... Hey, yeah, I think somebody else in the entire world owned that helmet. Just I just be have, like, I have this encyclopedic hey, knowledge. That that's Ted's. Why do you have Ted's stuff? <laughs> They're just brothers. It's just every merchant in the whole world. I sold this to, to that guy. Family members. Yeah, the, the merchant family. Okay, so this could not actually be easier. The, this is the coolest thing ever. So I went on the Steam Workshop. I clicked on the mods that I want, and then I started Skyrim. And Skyrim is like, hold on, let me download those mods, check for updates on all of them, and then just get you ready to go. I've gone ahead and install all those things that you wanted. It's very convenient. And who says that PC gaming is complex? <laughs> well, Steam has, as many people would agree, been the savior of PC gaming. Is, now my computer is on fire. A disaster. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> Computer's it all like, I'm burning! <laughs> Prior to Steam. Yeah. Steam right. has another pretty yeah, nice but, feature that... It is also... I, it does have... I, I, will, I will vehemently stay in the, in the camp that there are some major detractors 
keeping people in camp council. Um, sure. Prohibitive cost is definitely one of them. Prohibitive cost of not just the, the hardware, um, but having to keep up on the hardware, not knowing whether or not your hardware can run said software. Pix, I built that thing five years ago, and it's still running Skyrim really well. I, I think the days of, oh yeah, it's been three months, you need a new video card, are pretty much over. I, I think that, yes, you get a computer and it lasts a lot longer, but the initial computer still is oh, yeah, approximately yeah. four times more expensive than a console yeah, if you like, want to do yeah, it right. We spent like $900 on one. Right. And, and this is the tower. And, and if we had built it custom, it probably would have been closer to like 1200 But at the same time, if you're really going to play a lot of games, you can save a lot of money on software through sales like Steam or Amazon. You also have to deal with a lot of BS as far as DRM goes. Uh... Whereas in my console games, I just put it in and it works. I don't have to worry about the hardware, I don't have to worry about De I'm just checking that I'm always Depends online. how exactly you're playing. That is true and not true, because... Um, with the advent of Project $10 codes, I would say that PCs and consoles are right neck and neck on that. Because if you only ever use one computer, and you only ever use one particular console, then you're good to go. A DRM is not mostly going to get in your way unless servers are down, which has also affected console games, like the Modern Warfare series. Or, um, if you move computers or move consoles, then you need to uh, authenticate again, which certain DRM will only let you authenticate a certain number of times, so you better not change computers very often. Or, in the case of games with Project $10 codes, you need to bring your gamer tag with you on a memory unit, or kind of be screwed with PlayStation. Right. Because you lose that DLC. DRM only gets in the way in corner cases. There's lots of those corner cases, and it's totally kind of unnecessary, but it, it works most of the time. <laughs> Especially Steam, because Steam is the most effective DRM, I'd say, in the history of software. It's, it's, DRM so that actually, it's DRM that actually gives you something for using it. And it works most of the time. The vast majority of the time, if you want to play a game, Steam will let you. <laughs> yep. I personally have not encountered a situation where I was like, I really want to play this game, and Steam was like, no. I I've had that a couple of times. There have been times when Steam is not up, so it won't let me sign in. They've had server downtime. I've also had my network connection down, and so I'm like, well, I'll just play a local video game that doesn't need an internet connection. But then it's like, I can't do that because you need to authenticate with Steam to do that. But I actually got around that in that circumstance by tethering my phone just long enough to log into Steam and run my game and then unplugging my phone. Ah, oh, there you go. But it, it, it is a problem sometimes, but only 1% of the time. 1%. Like the rich people. Yep. So yeah. The Steam Summer t Sale will continue until our wallets are empty. Or until July 22nd, whichever comes first. Both. <laughs> will Our wallets will empty right at the at midnight on July 22nd. Yes. Okay, that's legit. Uh, Pixie, you and I were enjoying a fairly nice feature of Steam this week, which is its screenshot galleries with captions. Oh, that, that's right. I should pick some of those typos you were playing The Sims 3, which... Which is an old game not available on Steam, and... I, I gotta admit, Origin's been kind of good to me with it. I, I... Origin... Origin has a lot of merits because it is a direct ripoff of Steam. It's like, well, Steam does a lot of things right, and Origin does a lot of things right, too. All of the same things Steam does right, and all of the same things Steam does wrong. 
because it's I, almost I exactly however, Steam. However, however, I still put the Steam's my um my Sim shortcuts in Steam and play it through that way because I like the overlay better. Yes, the Steam overlay has shortcuts and or has screenshots and lets you upload to a screenshot gallery with nifty little captions. And so as she was playing The Sims 3, she was writing a little F12. story for her characters. And so I could just hit F12, take a screenshot, slap a caption on it, and upload it, and not ever have to leave the game or worry about loading the game back up. It was really nice. Nice. The EA's um, in-game screenshot stuff, like where you take a picture and the screen flashes and makes camera noise and all that, is actually a much bigger pain in the ass. Is that in game for The Sims or in game for Origin? In game for The Sims. Right. And in game as in in this specific game. Right. So I'm currently looking at my copy of games that I have not played in forever that are technically still attached to my Steam account. It's actually really awesome. If they gave me the opportunity, I would without hesitation buy Age of Empires 2 and or Age of Mythology on Steam for maybe even up to like $10 each just for the opportunity to have them available across computers without Wait, keeping track of discs. I'm pretty sure I've seen that. Uh, Age of Empires 3 is. The others are not. I'm confident. They're in fact not even available through any other digital distribution source. So I'm, good old games is pretty much the only way? I don't even know if they're available on good old games, but I'll check right now. So yeah, things, Steam Summer Sale. It's awesome. Um, I guess do we want to get into some League stuff? Because that's been continuing. I want to ask Pixie real quick. You had a brief introductory experience with Civilization IV. Did I that do anything for you? I played which was really long. Yes, the civilization. Also, all I've of them. discovered that Gandhi's kind of a jerk in these games. Gandhi is a douche in all civilization games. He's the most aggressive, selfish, mean. Like you'll do diplomatic conversations with him, and he'll just insult you. I mean, even when he's cooperating with you, he'll just call you ugly because he's a jerk. Gandhi, kind of a jerk. That sounds like a title for this episode. Sure. Done. One experience I wanted to relay about Civilization is that I habitually always make, like, super progressive liberal societies, even when Where there's... Where you jump everything into building science and, like, culture. And that sort of there's limits the gameplay aspects of the game. Because, well, even... Sometimes I'll do military, but I won't do things like adopt monarchy or slavery civics, because it's like, yeah, because but... Because that's a terrible thing to do, yeah. Yeah. I, didn't, like... I didn't touch, like, that three theocratic nonsense. I was just like, yeah, I don't need this religion. It's not doing anything for me. <laughs> absolutely not. Why, I and really every, miss... Everybody loves me because I build theaters everywhere. <laughs> I really miss Call to Power 2 because it had civics like technocracy and where you can rule by technology. And there was lots of super cool progressive liberal things you could do. The civilization is all confined to the past. How Someday. do you manage your society? No, like Mind controlling and, robot um, bees? Once you get into the proper ends of the research trees. You uh, they get up research, to stuff that is all... genetics... Stations. Yeah, they, they get up to exactly the modern era, and yeah. they follow pretty closely actual technology that we have. And then the very end of the tech tree is called Future Tech, and it's just generic stat bonuses. Uh, there's an infinite number of them you can research if you have enough time. So, uh, just a quick impression. Do you think it, it looks interesting for more playing? Eh. I don't know. I wasn't, like, totally sold on it from the tutorial, to be honest. Yeah. I, I haven't played too much of it, it either. It on for freaking ever, which, I mean, is fine, because I play The Sims, and that's basically infinite, but... Yeah, that game know, never ends. Just... Is that super engaging? And it feels a lot like there's the there's this one right way to do it, and everything else is just kind of wrong. 
Also, I kind of accidentally declared war on Gandhi with like 10 minutes left. <laughs> Bring it, Gandhi! <laughs> Pacifism this! Actually, no, which was really terrible because he'd been building like nothing but military stuff. <laughs> yeah, Gandhi and will roll up on your doorstep with tanks. He doesn't yeah. give a fuck. Gandhi with nuclear weapons. I think Actually, we missed no, the point. Actually, no, I was the first build the Manhattan Project, but... Alright, then. Wait, were you actually located in the U.S.? Uh, no, I was... It's um, called the Manhattan Project, no matter what. That's another hallmark of the Civilization series, is crazy an um, anachronisms, which is that yeah, you like, will I'm, fight... I'm building in Rome, but I put up Hollywood. <laughs> and... You can fight civilization in civilization dudes with machine guns. You can fight archers against machine guns. It just works. And somehow archers have a reasonable chance of winning. So, it's not a terribly accurate civil uh, simulation in that regard. Alright then. Oh, I so tried... Hmm? Okay, right. leak. Go ahead, leak. Um, so yeah, league-wise, uh, we've got some interesting announcements coming up. Uh, namely... New skin for one of my favorite champs. Uh, of course. <laughs> Cassie's getting a new skin. She's going Greek. Which is uh, weird you'd think they'd have come up with that sooner. Certainly sooner than I would have expected the other two skins. Right. So you get Greek Cassiopeia. Who's got, like, new effects for her abilities, which is yep. really cool. all, all of her uh, skins are getting new particle effects. That's a universal thing. Um, in addition, rather than a global rework of the stealth mechanic, Riot just decided it'd be easier to just redo the two characters that use it the most. So Evelyn and Twitch will be getting remade when the next patch launches probably sometime this week. Um, I think you probably mean sometime next week. No, it's supposedly this week. Probably really? tomorrow. They was actually the rumor. On Tuesday, so. uh, characters, remakes, and re-releases get uh, released Wednesday through Friday these days. They've pretty much abandoned the Tuesday only uh, thing. Huh. That uh, surprises me. So yeah, we're, we're going to see remakes of those two champs. Complete remakes, mind you, so all of their moves are getting completely redone. Uh, Evelyn's passive is now her stealth, rather than her old passive, which was just she takes less damage from minions. Probably the worst passive in the game. Just saying. <laughs> Evelyn's new passive is, after not being attacked for roughly ten seconds, she invises. And the invisibility is entirely dependent on her proximity to an enemy champion. So she can freely run past and through tur uh, not turrets, but uh, wards, as long as they're not a pink ward, without being seen. So it's still a rather powerful ability, but you're not going to have Evelyn getting on top of you and then not being able to do anything for to her. You're not going to be able to drop an AoE on top of her and have her stay invisible. If you hit her with any sort of damage whatsoever, she's going to be revealed. Which is why it's going to be kind of critical for those characters that are uh, worried about it to just buy a... Uh, God, what's the item called? The the Burning Cloak. Sunfire Cape. Uh, basically, if you have a Sunfire Cape, Evelyn will never sneak up on you. Because you'll do damage to her as soon as she gets near you. Yep, she'll be revealed. Uh, that said, she's also now probably the fastest character in the game. Uh, because she has an ability that's... Uh, I believe it's her... It e? Speed. Yes, it's her E. Yeah, it's a stacking speed buff that, when she triggers the active ability, doubles the amount of speed she's gained. She easily clears 600. She looks like she's going to do her role. She's going to be a melee assassin who will run in, surprise you, and hopefully kill you and get away. So, yay for finally fixing those characters. In addition, we finally have a new champ being released, Champ 101, as she was called in production. Uh, Zyra! So we're actually going back to female champs. The last one of those we got was Lulu. Champ 101 oh. should be a school teacher or a professor. Because it's 101, <laughs> like a class. Nope. Champ 101 is a plant elf lady. A.K.A. Poison Ivy from Batman. Yeah, it's Poison Ivy. There's, there's no way around it. 
Um, she has a lot of different plant-based maneuvers. Uh, her most interesting being that she can drop seeds on the ground, which give a minor amount of vision. And then if she casts an ability that goes over the seed, it grows into a plant. And either it becomes a melee uh, uh, plant, such as the uh, the tentacle turrets from StarCraft that will attack people who get too close, or it'll become a ranged turret. She looks unique. Like, I, I always love when a character is released into the game that I genuinely feel is a skill-based champion. Someone that you have to know what you're doing to do well as. I like those characters. I want to see more of them. Zyra is definitely one of those. Just watching her uh, sneak peek videos and seeing her played on the public uh, test uh, realm. She's a hard champion to play. If you don't know what you're doing, Rise is pretty much just going to run you over. Uh, her passive is also kind of awesome. So when she dies, she transforms into one of her plants and gets to fire one last skill shot before she dies that hits like a truck. Not bad. So yeah, I, I'm really looking forward to this character. I think she's going to be truly awesome. She's got uh, two soft CCs and one hard CC. She spawns minions. She has a death mechanic. Like, this character could not be cooler. There's one thing I want to know when this patch comes out. Are they nerfing Aurelia? No, Aurelia is not being nerfed. However, Malphite is, and that's something that's been needed in this game for a while now, because that bastard does way too much damage for what he is. <laughs> I'm a tank who never actually has to build a damage item, but can still kill everything on your team. Yup. Indeed. I've also recently fallen in love with the very specific meme of parodying songs using League of Legends characters. I there's a I think it is a single group. It's Kyle Danger Hendrick who was also um I'll have to tell you in a second. The group that did I just played Jax. I uh, AOD for that. Area of defect. Yep. And I, I, they have put out a number of works that are pretty dang catchy, and also very lyrically entertaining. You were singing Hey Karthus Press R earlier today. It's a good song. <laughs> Listen to it even when I'm not playing League. So yeah, uh, plans for next week, Dark Knight. There, there's no question. Dark Knight we, will, Rises. we will be discussing the Dark Knight Rises, without a doubt. Hopefully with the Steam Summer Sale, at some point, Sins of a Solar Empire Rebellion will go on sale, and I'll be able to pick it up without any uh, qualms whatsoever about it. If it doesn't, it'll probably be another week before we get that one reviewed. I am. My summer class is absolutely killing me right now, and I am still going to manage to find time to see The Dark Knight Rises. It's, it's worth it. Yup. So yeah, I think that pretty much covers it for the week. Yep. Dragons and Spider-Man. Basically touches on everything. Dragons, spiders, a little bit of lead. Do we know when Zyra's coming out? Uh, we do not have a confirmed date. She will probably be released Spectating. in this patch. Hmm. Alright, well, I guess that'll do it for this week. In the meantime, I'm Pixie. I'm Sun. And I'm Pyrosim. And we'll catch you next week on Nerd Talk. <laughs>